what is coping? Um, first of all, you have to understand that we cope when something bothers us. You know, if something weren't bothering us, there would be no need to cope. And what I noticed a number of years ago, with a little help from the Buddhists, um, is that things only bother me, or you, or anybody else, when they are not how we want them to be. I mean, think about it. If something's exactly how I want it to be, why would it bother me? And if things bother us when they're not how we want them to be, then what that means really is we're dealing with frustration. Coping is dealing with frustration. So the practical question becomes, how do you do that in a healthy way? We know a lot of unhealthy ways. We can get depressed, we can get anxious, we can eat too much, drink too much, drug too much, uh, all kinds of fixes. In fact, my definition of a fix is anything I do to feel better without in any way dealing with what makes me feel bad. What makes me feel bad is my frustration. Something's not how I want it to be. So let me give you a principle, which is not original to me, but I'm going to explain it in a way that may help you make sense of it. Um, if you look at it, and I, I, that what this hand holds is what I want, or it represents what I want. And this hand represents what I got. There's a gap between them. And the gap is my actual frustration. Any healthy coping is going to be something I do that gets rid of this gap. What a lot of us would like to think is that coping consists of doing some work. Hopefully not too much, but I work and I work and I work. I get what I want, right? And this is called satisfaction. And a lot of people think this is the only opposite to frustration. Well, that's all well and good, and there are times when we can do this. But if you go back and look at the gap closely, what you realize is there's a necessary condition for me to be able to do this. And the necessary condition to be able to do some work and get what I want is control. If I don't have control, then I can work up, and I can work down, and I can work around in circles, and I am not going to get what I want. In fact, I'm going to remain frustrated. And it turns out that the human brain is hardwired for another way to get rid of this gap, a healthy way, and when I don't have control, it's the only possible way to get rid of my frustration. And that would be to stop wanting what I can't have. Um, in fact, I will remain frustrated until the precise moment that I do that. We have a name for when we stop wanting what we can't have. It's called acceptance. And acceptance is every bit as much an opposite to frustration as satisfaction is. Now, what this all means is that if I have a problem that's bothering me, I have a frustration, and I'm going to have to sort my frustration into two piles. The pile that I don't control, which I must accept. The pile which I do control, which maybe I can do something about. Um, once I've done that, all I really have is my goals. I don't have a plan yet. I haven't identified the tools that I'm going to use. And frankly, I'm not going to talk about those things uh, in this clip. Um, you can find them in my book, however, White Knuckles and Wishful Thinking, to give it a little plug. Um, to summarize all this, there's a formula that was created about 1900 to, to describe this principle. It happens to be a prayer which Alcoholics Anonymous adapted in 1935 or so, and it's a serenity prayer. In the original version, it's God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. For secular purposes in therapy, we might rephrase it as uh, life, common sense, consciousness, universe, reality, Help me to stop wanting what I can't have, because I can't have it. Give me the courage, willingness, motivation to use the control I do have to get what I want, as long as it doesn't make things worse, and the wisdom to know the difference. Um, and once, once you've identified the two piles of what you have to accept and what you might be able to change, all that's left to do is to identify the specific tools and the specific plan by which you're going to get there. And like I said, you can find those in my book, White Knuckles and Wishful Thinking. It's called The Sparrow Model of Coping. Uh, thank you.